my name is Nathan Ross. Um, I'm from Albion College up in Michigan. Um, my advisors here are Dr. Dave Ellis and Rick. Um, so my project is based off of this journal article, um, which is on a relativistic atomic structure package. Um, and this is computer software that um, just conducts relativistic atomic structure um, calculations, but it uses relativistic effects. It takes relativistic effects into account. Um, so the title is Graph 2K, and um, basically it's an abbreviation of that title. So um, it's, used, it's created in Fortran and C language, and it uses Linux operating system. And like I said, um, it uses a relativistic approach to calculate um, different things that you would want to know about atomic structure. So um, what I started out doing, the first thing I did was um, I had to test this stuff against other um, known values. So what I first started looking at was the, nitro, the nitrogen isoelectronic sequence. Um, if you don't know what uh, isoelectronic sequence is, I looked at all the atoms from nitrogen up to Z equals 80, which is mercury. Um, but they were all uh, stripped of their electrons, so they all have the same amount of electrons as nitrogen, so they have seven electrons. Um, and why this graph is important to look at is because um, at, at low Z here, if you look at this, um, it's a lot different behavior than at high Z, and that's what the relativistic um, computer program um, really, gets, uh, really gets at to what it's calculating. So, um, low Z values doesn't really use uh, relativity. Um, relativistic effects don't come into effect, really. Um, they use LS coupling, which is basically um, it adds up all the L and S, which are just components of the angular momentum of each electron, and um, it gets the total angular momentum um, of the system, and that's how it determines the electron energy state for low Z. But as you get to higher Z, um, the angular momentum is added up for each individual electron, um, because at higher Z, you have a higher nuclei, or larger nucleus, um, so the electrons move a lot faster, and because of this faster speed, you have to take relativity. So I took this program, GRASP 2K, and well, Dr. Ellis did most of it. He wrote a macro that was easy for me to use. Um, uh, basically, uh, he showed me how to use it, and I punched in some stuff, and it, it just spit out a lot of data. Um, I, first, I made this graph out of, um, out of Excel, and that took a long time. Later on, I went and used Python and figured out an easier way to do it. But um, this is pretty close to the graph that I had. If you want to compare, um, this graph, by the way, is from an old textbook um, using older computer data. Um, it didn't really take um, and use the Dirac equation, which takes in relativistic uh, effects using JJ coupling. And this didn't really use that as much. But as you can see, it's not really that accurate. Um, over here, this light blue line cuts below the origin, um, and that's really not supposed to happen. And as you can also tell here, these lines split away from uh, their couples a lot sooner than what they're supposed to. So I'll get to why that is. But if you compare mine also to the, um, the NIST results right here, these are experimental results for these first five lights. Um, so this is one level, and these are two on top of each other, and these are two more. As you can tell, they're not quite accurate to experimental data. Um, so again, this is, this is the second spot where this data has been off. But the reason why that is, is because in the first calculation I made, the graph that I created up here, um, we only took the first two energy levels into account. And as you know, nitrogen has seven electrons. So there's two electrons in the first level, two electrons here in the 2s, and then the other three are going to be here in the 2p. That's its neutral state. But it's also possible for these electrons to get excited and go into higher levels. So only looking at these two levels is not really that accurate. It's not going to give correct prediction of the possible energy states for the electrons. So what Brass can do, um, and what specifically Dr. Ellis did in his macro, was he gave me the opportunity to look at just the first two and then add different energy levels. So um, this on here on the right is my, uh, my calculation using Python. It's my graph of the same data using GRASP, but it's um, for including n equals 3 the third energy level, and as you can tell, this is a lot more accurate, a lot closer to what um, I was expecting to get. 
So as you include more energy levels, it's going to be more accurate data. So um, that's all I have really. Later on, we're going to look at um, the probabilities for each energy level um, for the electrons to change levels. So um, we're going to be doing some integration and some stuff with the graph. So we'll that sort of thing. So, that's what Any questions? Hey. Yeah. Um, could you say a little more about what your graph is actually saying? Like what's being plotted on the on the vertical axis and Okay, yeah, sorry. That's kind of confusing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the y axis. Just a rough interpretation. Looks like some crazy units. <laughs> okay, so this is it looks really confusing, but um, <laughs> really it takes the energy of each level and it subtracts the energy of this baseline right here. This is zero. Um, it, it subtracts that and then it gets E. So each one of these, this is subtracted from this energy, this is subtracted from this energy, this is. So for each one, it changes the energy and then it divides it by the highest energy minus the lowest energy. So it's basically a way to get it all grouped together so it, you can see it, how it relates to it. Okay. The other energy states. These are just the different energy states. Um, these middle ones here have negative parity, which is different spin. Um, these can these electrons can jump to this level, and these can jump down, but they can't. This can't jump to the positive parity. They have to change okay. parity. Which is, so that's a different kind of energy level of the electrons. And uh, sorry. And Z is um, is that the amount of energy? No, Z is just. Um, the atom. So Z equals seven is nitrogen. Oh, okay. Eight is right. oxygen, but with right. seven electrons. Okay, thank you. Yeah. How are you actually calculating these energies? Are you using some sort of like big variational method where you guess a weight function and then try to like minimize the energy? Um, or it's a mixture basically between um, the Pauli equation and the Dirac equation. Um, it, it, multiplies by coefficients as you get to higher z's. Um, there's more of a JJ effect mm -hmm. uh, from the uh, Dirac equation than there is from the poly, because poly's not relativistic. So it's, I'm not sure how it really works. Well, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Can you go to your very last slide? Your very last slide? No. Okay, so all the other graphs have very smooth looking curves, but the one on the right has some sharp angles. Is there something special about oh, that? This, I just finished this uh, yesterday with Python, and um, for some reason, it, it looks like, like the lines are getting yeah, close together. Yeah, this line should keep going, but for some reason, when they when they connect, um, instead of crossing, they're bouncing, and it's saying that it, so this, this black okay. line should keep going. Okay. Um, so it's, it's just, just like a coloration. It's switched to energy states, states. yeah. And I haven't figured out how to make the lines smoother in Python yet, so that's one thing I'm working on. So this graph is a different program than the Excel one. Okay. It's, it's, it's not the data doing anything. No, it's not. It's the just the colors. Okay. It's the electrons doing it. <laughs> yeah, this is just really basic Python plotting. I haven't figured out how to make it look better yet. Okay. I was forcing them to do Python, so I should learn it. It's a great language. <laughs> So you're saying you're doing uh, this program is relativistic calculations, which of course become more important than I see. Uh, is it just the relativistic effects of the electron, or are you also including uh, the recoil of the nucleus here at the center of mass frame? Because that's one of the things that becomes important also. Um, I haven't really had one, so I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not How big it affect? Dr. Alpha did it. Yeah, sure. No, this it's a very, very small effect. That, okay. On the, on the scale here. Yeah. And did you say that the there was experimental data from NIST yeah. for Z equals 20? Yes, yeah, I just took it for Z equals 20. I didn't take it for all of them. But so um, I'm just curious, is it, uh, is it, so is that calcium? Is that right? Uh, is it, I, yeah. So is it straightforward to pull um, that many electrons off, off of enough atoms to get experimental data? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's why you don't go higher because they don't want to. Some, some kind of fast beam. It's got to be yeah. Can you use coronal data at all? I that's what I was thinking. Yeah, astronomers might see, see some of that. <laughs>
<clears throat> All right. Well, let's thank Nate again.